Hello, good morning. Welcome to Stamp and Chat. It's Tuesday the 20th of July. We are heading towards August, which is quite scary. Let me just check that I'm live in the right place and hopefully somebody will be hopping on to join me. Okay, I'm in the right place. That's always a good start. So today I'm going to be um, crafting with the Give It A Whirl dies. I'm also still focusing on the Tidings and Trimming stamp set. So I'm going to be using a bit of that and the Biggest Wish as well. And I did design three cards to create for you today using those products, but I thought I would just do two and then I'm going to do a sneak peek. Um, a little another cutie so you have seen it but I thought it'd be nice to actually stamp with it so you could see it and I'll share some of the new celebration papers as well so hello if you are joining please do say hi it is super hot here in the UK um, it's it's too hot <laughs> we're not used to this heat um, I think it's gonna get up to like 31 degrees again today and it's only dropping to like 15 at night so yeah, it's super warm, too hot to really do anything. Um, I came over here first thing when I went out to water the garden and the kitchen garden and opened up all the velux, opened up the end windows and it's still like 27 degrees over here. So yeah, it's really warm. I've got a fan on, but of course a fan and paper isn't a good mix. So I've, I've kind of got it blowing down on my feet just to try and keep me cool. So, cause I do find, I don't know about you guys, but my feet get really hot and kind of swelly in this weather. Definitely TMI, but anyway, let us turn you down and get crafting and show you what I'm using. Move everything out of the way just scooted all my stamps out of reach as well which isn't good so let me tone you down please bear with me while while I do that you know I hate this part but it has to be done get your set up on my desk wait for the catch up zoom in a bit Move those stamps back that I just scooted right out of the way. Get some light on. And get rolling, get stamping because I don't wanna hold you all up for too long. Morning, Ruth, how are you doing? How are you coping with this weather? Morning, lucy -Ann. nice to have you join me and um, join all of us, of course. So, I used to, little story, I used to absolutely love the sun. I'm not saying I still don't love it, um, but I don't sit in it like I used to. I think we might have been having this conversation last week, but yeah, I don't sit in it like I used to anymore. Um, one, because of health reasons, and two, because I just get too hot. Hot, hot, hot. It surely is, Ruth. Morning, Belle, my lovely. How are you? Did it only go down to 23 degrees? I'm not sure it was what the actual temperature was. Um, I'm just going on what my weather app says on my phone. And I'm sure it said it was going to 20 to 15. But yeah, it felt more like 23. It is pretty warm over in the barn. Considering it's a very thick walled stone building. It is cool, don't get me wrong, but upstairs is really, really hot. And we've got a lot of velux up there and I just, I, you don't seem to get a lot of breeze coming through. So yeah, we've had to have a fan on at night as well. So yeah, sleeping is, is challenging, isn't it, in this weather? But hey, and poor little Alfie, bless him. He is going for a haircut tomorrow. Um, but it's just way too hot for the pets, isn't it? Way too hot. So he's like searching for the shadiest spot ever. And when I came down this morning, he wasn't on his bed. He was actually under the dining table. It must have been cooler under there. Of course, we have the big, tall glass windows and the light just, the sunshine just comes straight in and really heats everything up. So yeah, beautiful to be having this weather. We shouldn't complain. Um, 
but you know a little bit of rain at night wouldn't wouldn't do amiss it would help with my watering down on the veg garden so it's taken me longer and longer to water down there every morning and my greenhouse I'm actually watering in the middle of the day as well because it's just so hot the doors are wide open the automatic vents are open the side shutters are open it's just so hot in there and, and you know the tomatoes don't like it so they've been very very thirsty okay so this morning i might have to just pull some stamps from there to mount move that out of the way i am using this is my color combo so soft succulent misty moonlight sahara sand Lucy Ann, the children are finding it hot. I know, and it's so hard to to kind of do anything really with them when the weather's like this, isn't it? It's, you know, they just get hot and bothered. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really off my food as well. I've just, my appetite has gone. It's, I've not had my breakfast yet because I just didn't feel like it. It's way too hot. So I went to see the grandchildren yesterday and Cole's, bless her, had set up. They don't get a lot of shade in their garden until later on in the afternoon. So she'd made a canopy out of blankets in the trees um, so that she'd got a lovely shady area for the children to sit. She'd put a blanket down and all their toys down there. So, right, let me bring in the first kit and show you my new die set. This is the Give It A Whirl set. Now, I don't think I've bookmarked I'm going to find it in the catalogue really quickly because it is very easy to miss. So it's on page 57. Just get to that page. And it's actually this page here. And I think I first missed it because I wasn't particularly drawn to that set. As great as it is for children's projects, I hadn't really focused on the die set at all until somebody in the team pointed it out. So this is the die set. It does actually go with that stamp set, um, but I've just bought the dies. Look, there's 21 dies in here and it is designed to be, um, to use this die and this outer piece to create a, a wheel on a card. But look at all the other fabulous shapes that you can cut out with. You've got stars, you've got hearts. I absolutely love the clouds. Um, and you've got different shaped hearts here. And so I thought today I would play with these. I've already created a class with them, which I might share you later. It's a bit of a sneak peek and there could be penguins involved. Um, oh, morning, Lucy. How are you doing? How are you coping with the weather? It's too hot, isn't it? It's too hot for anything. Um, yeah, so I thought I would create something with these today. I'm also still using dies from the Christmas trimmings because obviously I wanted to really focus on this bundle and probably this week will be the last week that I will create some non-Christmas projects with this because next week I want to share, start sharing some sneak peek things with you so I'm using those dies as well I've pulled in also from the beautiful sentimental rose kit I'm going to be using this stamp set just for a couple of the greetings because it's such a great one to get so actually let's leave that out I need to mount some of those so so the set makes nine cards and this lovely box and it comes with so many I've shown you this before but it comes with so many gorgeous things it's just 18 pounds fabulous gift fabulous um treat for yourself and then you are left with your ink pad your stamp set and your block as well so amazing value so I'm going to be using that stamp set what else am I going to be using? I'll be pulling in my blending brush as well with the misty moonlight. I've done a little bit of die cutting ahead of time because I really want to share three projects with you. Right, so let's start with the first one. So I just wanted to show you, and I've not done a lot with these dies, so I'm still kind of learning myself. 
so you'll have to kind of bear with me. So I'm starting with a base. Now because of, let's bring the dies back in, because of this, the size of this, on the original cards that I made for my class, which I will sneak peek at the end, um, this measures for about five and a quarter, okay? Now normally, I cut my card at five and three quarter, but I've trimmed it down to five and a half. Belle, you're excited to see the Give It A World Eyes. I know. Um, I was kind of told that I should get them by somebody on a Zoom chat. And I'm kind of glad that I did. They're quite, you can do so, so much with them. I have found it a bit challenging because I physically only wanted to use these stamps and not bring in anything else. So that has been really challenging for me. But to be honest, if you got the die set, you could use like eight different stamp sets to create the perfect card if you wanted to. So I've kind of made it hard for myself, but also I'm showing you that you can achieve a lot with minimal products as well. And in fact, I'm not even using the Sahara Sand ink. I'm only using Misty Moonlight and Soft Succulent, I believe. Um, the Sahara Sand was to, to pull in the colours that I'm using. So, usual eight and a quarter, but I've, I've trimmed it to five and a half. Now, let's start with the die cutting. So I'm going to pull in my plate. And I need this, oops, large die here. And as I said, bear with me because I'm new to this set. And it's not technical, but you just have to think about a couple of, a couple of things when you're using it. Morning, Ellie. Oh, you're homes, homeschooling Emma. She's isolating. Oh, dear. You gave your long-haired guinea pig a haircut. Wow. Well done. <laughs> do you have to pin it down do they sit quite chill is it like Alfie loves I don't think he would openly admit it but he loves a bath he loves being um showered down and we've got the dog wash under the carport and we've got a Belfast sink and if we put him in there after a WALK which doesn't happen now because it's too hot he quietly likes it I think so I'm wondering if you if your guinea pigs like a bit of pampering as well what else do I need? Like just those two to start with. So first of all, just from basic white cardstock, I'm going to cut this one out. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop that on that. Oops, it looks a bit crooky. Let's straighten it up. I haven't given myself much room there, have I? For errors. I've cut this like almost at the same size. Um, and I've got a scrap of like white, oh, it's not photocopy paper, it's from my note, notepad. And I'm going to put that over the top. And what that will do is just to help to protect, my plate is on its last legs as well. It will help to protect any imprints onto this layer. So if you've got like a really heavily etched top plate, if you just pop in a bit of white photocopy paper, it will just help to decrease the amount of um, like imprints that you will get. Now, this die is quite stiff to run through, but the reason is when you're popping it through your machine, it's cutting over, like the rollers are going all the way over this long edge in one go, and it's, so it is quite stiff. So we end up with this piece here. And then next, put that one back. I want to cut the wheel. I'm going to tape it down just because when I turn around to move it, to cut it, it moves. Let's just pop that one on top as well. Belle, you're seeing a guinea pig spa on your head. Powder puffs and all. <laughs> what fun. <laughs> oh dear. I think, you know, the pampering pets business. Oops, that 
fell on the floor. You know, it's quite good. I pay um, £30 to have, have Alfie's fur trimmed and he doesn't have, he's never had any body hair trimmed. It's literally like his skirt at the back, his ears, his chest. Um, and like his paws, he gets like slipper on his slippers on his feet where his paws get all fluffy. So yeah, still £30, but it's worth it. Definitely worth it. Okay, what else do I need to do? So let me just explain. And I don't know if I'm going to be very good at explaining this. But basically, this becomes the front part of our card. But the wheel slots behind here like this. So what we need to do is create a window on this front panel so that we can, when we turn the wheel, we can see things behind. So on this first card, and we've got different windows here. These dies with the little polo on. These are the different windows. So we've got a circle, a heart, this kind of wedge, pizza wedge one, and then a rectangle. For today, I'm going to use the rectangle. On my next card, I'm going to use the wedge. And then what we do is we decide on this front panel where we want our little window to be. And then we line up this hole with the center of this. Let's bring in my plate and I can line it in and then cut it. Ellie, he's the old man. Oh, is he quite calm and collected? A quiet little guinea pig. So I'm just going to lay that one down and check I'm doing this right. Tape it down. I'll pop my bit of scrap over just to protect my layers. And then I'm going to run that one through again. Hoping that it hasn't moved. Belle, I loved your live. I only finished watching this morning. Very, very creative. Loved it. Loved how you used, showed different ways of using our embossing folders. Now, you, we do get a bit of an imprint, but I'm not worried about that. I am really not worried. And from that die, I get left with this lovely little panel. But then on my main piece, it leaves that lovely stitched edge. And we all know I love a stitched edge. So I'm going to pop that to one side because I can use that later. Right, let's start with a bit of adding a bit of colour to this. So what I'm going to do is bring in my Misty Moonlight and my stamping blending brush. Now I'm going to point these out in the catalogue in case you are not sure where they are because I use them a lot. Now I've lost the page. I did have it, honestly. There it is. Put a marker on it as well. So page 129 and they're up here. They are number seven. So you get three brushes for £11.25 and as I've said before you can keep these colours keep one brush for similar colours what have we got going on the reverse let's use this bit for this part so I am just thought I dunked my thumb in the ink then I'm gonna pull on some ink take some off because it's very harsh to start with and I'm just gonna add some up at the top here on this top panel. Just to add some colour. Don't need to go too crazy, that was probably enough. And then with my Knight of Navy, I don't have the Misty Moonlight. 
marker pen, I'm just going to add oh, just lovely splats like that. Hopefully you can see. I'm looking on my phone and it's not very clear. Morning, Lynn. How are we? Are you surviving with this heat? Okay, next, I haven't put any scrappy bits in my envelope today. Shall I, let me do all of the stamping and then I've got a bit more die cutting to do as well. So, I've got two bits here. Let's bring my mat back in. Have the clean side. So Lynn, we're using the Give It A Whirl dies this morning, having a little play with them. Um, and also focusing on the tidings and trimmings, the Christmas set, but for non Christmassy projects. So what I need to bring in is my biggest wish. And I want the birthday stamp. So let's just mount that one on a block. Oh, my hair feels like it's growing from the heat it's um i did straighten it quickly this morning i don't know why why did i bother because it just goes fluffy i'm just checking what's in my little pot of goodness and what i need to stamp let me stamp this and show you how i've done it you may have seen this before if you've caught me live but i want to create a word using this stamp so I'm going to have the B and another B and then I want the A Y like that. And then what I will do is pull out well, I don't need to pull it out because I've actually done this bit already, but I then pulled out the hello and used a letter from there as well. And then all I've done, I'm not going to do all this because you've seen me do this before, is literally, this is for those who haven't seen this, the Biggest Wish stamp set. I just chop around each individual letter I like to round the corners on the B just chop around each individual letter to create a word which I will get to in a moment then from the tidings and trimmings I absolutely adore this star that's filled in with a beautiful pattern. So I'm going to ink that one up in the misty moonlight. Let's find a scrap. Oh, I did just dunk my thumb in it then. Just grab my wet wipe out. Stamp that one down. Look how beautiful it is. Absolutely stunning. I love that stamp. And as I've said before, you can die cut pieces out. Or if you've got like circle punches, you could punch pieces out of this. Or you could stamp flowers onto there and cut them out, you know, lined images. And the great thing about this one is that the, the Christmas trimmings dies cuts out that one there. So let's chop that off because we don't want to waste all of that card and run that one through quickly. Tape it down. It does line in quite nicely. Oops. Just run that one quickly through. There. It's 
a bit um didn't line it up that well did i but it's not really going to show not too worried you can always trim a bit off when you don't when you die cut something you don't line it up maybe as perfectly as you would like to you can always just trim trim a bit off just reading comments Lynn, you're melting. I know. It's like, how many showers do we have in one day? But other than that, you're okay. That is good to hear. The doctor trying to refer to a long COVID clinic. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know they actually existed. That's good. Your hair grows big and gets frizzy in the humidity. Yeah, mine does too. <laughs> like Monica in Friends. <laughs> Oh dear. The dramas we have to cope with, isn't it? It's like mine, if, when it goes cold, my hair goes um, static. Yeah, a bit of drizzle and it frizzes out. The problems, hey. Right, what I need to do now, let's do a little bit of stamping on this part. And this is, this is quite technical now, so you need to pay attention technical she says not technical at all and I've just fathomed this out so I don't know if you can see but from this die it leaves an imprint of that wedge which is this this one here so when you are using this one you can follow the line of that wedge in there I'm hoping the live is showing that up. But because I'm using the rectangle one, I'm just pulling it in. Because I'm using this one on my card, obviously I want to know where my stamping area is going to be. So what you can either do is in fact, I like to line it up with this. So I'm going to put this die back because then I know exactly what I'm looking at. And I line up the centre of this hole with the centre of this hole here. And where is it? There it is. And by do what I also do, I should I need to try and explain this first. Good, you can see the three sections. So on these three sections, I want this, this rectangle to appear in one of these sections, which will help me balance out where I'm going to stamp on here. So I look at this wedge and I can just see the lines on here. I wonder if you can see it. There's a line there and a line there. So I know that I'm kind of centrally in that wedge that's underneath. Hope that makes sense. Until you've got these dies and you play with them, it's hard to explain that. And then I'm just going to gently... I've got really shaky hands today. I don't know if it's the heat or the fact that I didn't have my breakfast, but I've got the collie wobbles or the eebie-jeebies as we call it. So we've got that very wobbly rectangle underneath. So then I'm gonna turn it round and then look at my next wedge here, line it up again, and they will overlap a little. And just gent, oh my goodness. It's because I'm standing up. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I can draw a straight line when I'm following something. Goodness me. And then the final wedge there. I'm laughing my pants off at myself. That was polite, wasn't it? And the final one. It's because I'm not leaning. I'm trying to lean on the table now while I do it. So on my panel here, I've got my three... These are my stamping areas, okay? Hope that makes sense. Now, obviously, if you were using one of the different shapes, you would draw that on there as well. Uh, another good thing 
looking to do with this set. Where are my pieces? Is to die cut out from a piece of cardstock those windows, and then you can actually hover them over your stamps to see. Obviously, bear in mind this one isn't, but some stamps aren't shown at a hundred percent on the cover. Um, so you may want to go inside to double check that something lines in. But but by having a little guide like this. You can hold it over and see, you know, which greetings work with which stamps. So that's really an, a handy thing to do, to create your own template. Um, where am I going with this? Right. Quick drink. Maybe the hydration will stop the shakes. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's start with some stamping on here. This always gets a bit nervy. So as I said, I'm going to use the, the stamps that came, come in the Sentimental Rose Kit. And I want a congratulations. Let's just mount you up. Gosh, what's my stamping going to be like with these wobbly hands today? And then I've pulled in... I'm trying to just use these stamps. Um, the solid star here, you've also got this lovely outline one as well, which I can't remember if I'm using, but for now I'm going to use the solid one and I want my soft succulent ink as well. So I'm going to hold this piece so that the rectangle is straight because that's how it's gonna look on my card. And I'm going to ink up my congratulations. At this rate, I'm only going to be doing one card. Been waffling for half an hour already. And I, I thought this just fitted lovely inside here. Right, what I'm going to do first is just make that flat, just because it was bowing a bit. And if your card is bowing, part of your stamp is going to hit it before the other part. And then you may get ink where you don't want it so i've just stamped down congratulations i love i love this set of stamps the kit is amazing value but these stamps you're just going to get so much use of after and i just love the styles of the fonts in there so let's just add a couple of stars to this one this is the cutest little solid star like that that one was a bit close but i'm not going to worry about that right now i need to look to see what's next so let's turn this one this way i got ink on there Gary. and let's do the next one so i've pulled out from the biggest wish the hello and I know this one fits just inside this window. So this is where my challenge was, guys, because I only wanted to use these two stamp sets. And obviously the main stamp set I'm using, the Tidings and Trimmers, is, is full of Christmas greetings. So I did struggle a bit, which is why I had to pull this one in. Um, what's next? Oh yes. And then I was a little bit stuck of what to put in this next window because I didn't want to pull anything else in, but I think it works. So I pulled out this beautiful bow. And I thought, Just go over here somewhere. I'm not worried about the bottom of it going out of the line. And then we'll bring in this little star stamp again. Definitely got the wobbles. 
And until it goes together, you never really know whether everything is in place. And then grab yourself a rubber. Now, this might sound stupid, but use a good eraser because you can buy cheap ones and they don't, believe it or not, they don't rub out properly. Has anyone else experienced that? Or they leave a smudge. And quite often, you know when you buy a lovely pencil with a rubber on the end, that rubber is useless. So invest in a good rubber for rubbing out pencil marks for little tasks like this. Let's get rid of all of those bits. I'm not worried about that smudge, it's gonna be hidden. So we've now got our panel with our three, um, well, our wheel with our three panels stamped. What we need to do now, you can see where we're going. This goes underneath, where's the center hole? I can never find the middle. So this goes underneath like this. Now, what you would probably want to do next is just Add to your brad in the center. Now, I don't have the new brads. They are on their way to me. The only brads I had were these candy dots, which are huge. Does anyone remember these? These were fab. They're really tired, so please don't ask me if I can get them for you. Um, but basically, they're a brad, and then you could pop a like a rhinestone or something on the top of them. So I found these in my stash, and I thought, well, that will do for now. But they are quite quite wide there but they do work so I think at this point I'm going to finish on my front layer before we go any further and then I'm going to share a little tip with you that I saw when I was just like researching on how to actually use these these dies so I only watched a couple of videos um and I think it's a good a good idea to when you're using new things like this is to try and figure out things for yourself because you find your own way of working it out. You know, we need a bit a little bit of help to start with sometimes. So I've pulled in some of the Christmas um, tidings of Christmas DSP. It's this one. You've all seen it because I show you it every week. Absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait. I I'm excited to start Christmas crafting, but I don't want to like jump in too early. Hello, Vicky. How are you doing? How are you bearing up in that lockdown? So I've just taken a strip of this Sahara sand one and it kind of, it has got snowflakes on it, but I don't think it screams out snowflakes. I'm slightly concerned that my Tombow is going to think it's a volcano today and in fact it doesn't even want to come out when it's hot it's a bit too much as well when it's hot it tends to just come out everywhere let's just move that around a bit I'm going to pop that at the bottom of, oh, of my card it's stuck to me just to break up the white but also I'm going to be mounting some Sahara sand underneath so to kind of bring the colours together right what we want to do next on my original one as well and I don't know if I'm a fan of using these you've got these lovely little pointy arrows that they don't die cut but they they leave an imprint, so they kind of leave a mark in your... I'll show you after on my finished one. And I just wasn't convinced that I loved it. But there are these cute, cute little arrow dies. But I've not done them on my projects yet. But you can always add them after, if you wanted to. Hello, Kim. All the way from Sydney. You're missing not having classes, Vicky. I know, it's so hard, isn't it? so hard not having people right so my brain has gone so i've got that layer stuck on here so what we can do now is actually build this together what i recommend 
once we, if I show you, let's just pop this in. So I'm going to pop the brad in, pull back the wings, and then you can see this is how it slides. So we've got the bow, we've got the congratulations, and we've got the hello. So think of all the possibilities of what you can put in these windows. You could probably make much better choices, but for my card today, I did find it quite challenging only using these sets. Now, once you put this layer on here, this becomes very almost impossible to turn. So what, I'm, what I've been doing is adding in an extra layer and what you can do if you've got a nice let's use this bit it's a bit narrower if you've got a circle punch um, in your stash use that because that works nicely but I'm just going to cut myself two little rectangles because they're scrap and they're hanging around but you do get left over when you use the circle one you get left over with circles of this so you could use this if you wanted to Yeah, I bet it is a bit um, cooler in Sydney. Sorry, just catching up on comments. Can't do two things in one go, obviously. So these two little panels, I'm going to pop a dimensional on the top and bottom. And what I'm creating is a spacer so I'm just going to pop those on top. So I've just created this spacer. Take my take your pick tool and make a hole somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter. It's not going to show. And then it goes behind here. have to do it that way. like that so that's just given us a bit of die cut there a bit of height away from this layer but of course what we need to think about is now this layer has to be raised as well so let's add dimensionals all the way around the outside I'm going to put one at the very top but obviously don't touch your wheel because it won't turn. If you stick your wheel down, it's not going to spin, or go anywhere. And there are other techniques on how you can make your, your wheel spin a little easier. But I found that by doing this, it does help. And it's pr a pretty simple task to do. So now I'm just going to add this layer and it's it's a bit of an awkward measurement. Oh, nearly dropped it then. And I've got a very small border, so hopefully I can get it evenly on like that. So you can see now it spins nicely can just see my little smudge there. I could always stamp a star on that. Like that. And then we'll pop this straight down onto our base now. So are you all with me on this? It's not too complex really, is it? I think you just need to play with it a little. And think of the possibilities. A mini dimensional sandwich, yeah, definitely. So, of course, if you have the. Oh, that's a bit crooky. The larger dimensionals to pop behind here, or the foam. Is it called foam? The foam adhesive, the sheets, which I've got one here. I haven't cut into it yet, though. It's that bad. That would work perfectly behind here. Okay, so we are getting somewhere. Right, let me find... What am I doing on my next one? I need to cut another white star quickly. And... 
And what else do I need to cut? One of these little leaves. This is from the tidings and trimmings. So I'm going to ink that in soft succulent. And then I just want a plain white star. So I'll quickly cut those out. Oh, it's hot in here. Just not a lot of air moving at the moment, is there? Shouldn't grumble, should we? Another bit of washy. And I'm not a fan of putting my hair up either. Ellie, you've got these dyes. They came on your last order. Exciting. You must play with them. Love to see what you create because um, you come up with some fabulous ideas. Right, just tucking these dyes back. Oops. Because you know I like them to go back on their magnet sheets so that I know where they are. So I've just cut those two out. Don't think I need any more stamp. Oh, one little word I need to stamp, but we can do that after. Then I'm gonna pull back in these gorgeous clouds. So great for all of your projects. The shapes and the elements on here. So I'm just going to quickly Cut those two. Let's just trim off. So we don't need all of that. Quickly cut those two out. They're so sweet. And you obviously get the larger cloud as well. So for your cuter projects or for, you know, masculine cards with trees and things, clouds are always really, really handy. And in my little pot of goodness, I've already, I can grab the pieces, prepared last night. It was 31 degrees over here last night when I was working. 31 degrees at like half a state at night. Crazy. Super crazy. Okay, let's add some clouds. Look how cute they are. Oh, Vicky, it's freezing there. Oh, I have to be honest, I don't like the cold. I like a bit of happy medium. So I'm going to pop one cloud at the top. And another one just hanging over the edge down here like that then this beautiful pattern star pop some dimensionals on oh top I had to trim down my thumb and my first fingernails because they both cracked chipped let's pop that one up here like that um, and it's really hard to pick anything up get used to having them about don't you right so you will have seen me use this word what I want to do, I need to hide this brad because it's way too big. I'm hoping my new brad, so we only have one set of brads in the catalogue. Show you where they are because if you are thinking of getting this die set, you'll need some brads. They're on page 143 and they are the round and square brads, but looking at them, they look really tiny. So uh, the circuit Kilo one is 3.2 and the square 6.4 millimetres. So 
super cute. So I've popped a glue dot, I'm going to put two on just because the first one kind of goes down into the, the gully. So pop a glue dot on there. I'm going to start with the B. My brain has to think where I'm putting that. And we're going to put that one right there to hide that brad. Then have I got another sheet of edges? No. I'm going to trim into the edge of my sheet and just add up. Oh, Add dimensionals behind these. I think for the letter B, they just about fit on the minis. If you could get them centrally, it would help. And then I think the Y, we'd better have a strip. like that. I might just trim that corner off. And I don't think I need a bit at the bottom. Maybe I should, just a super skinny one. Because <laughs> we don't want it dangling around down there. So let's just put these on. away a minute. So I did promise some baby boy cards using, I'm going to pull that up a minute, it needs to come a bit lower. Where I'm standing it's hard, looks like it's going uphill doesn't it? going to faff too much. It's handmade isn't it? She says I'm not going to faff but I'm just going to pull the B off again for the fourth time <laughs> and try and bring it down a bit. No don't play anymore. It's a bit crooky. Sorry it's got it's got to come over a bit. That's it, I promise I won't touch it anymore. <laughs> let's, let's crack on before I drive you all insane. Oh, the OCD of having things straight is tough work sometimes. I'm just going to pop that other star down at the bottom. I'm tempted to zoom in a little bit, but I will give you a closer shot in a moment. And then this little leaf... I'm just going to pop in underneath. On that corner. And then to finish, I made the word boy using the same birthday stamp, but the O from the hello. Let's start with the Y first so that we know where this is going to be ending and we'll have it coming right over this side my back's giving up on me now so all this stooping so what did we all get up to at the weekend because i did a little bit of gardening but not going to lie, it was too warm. Come on, out. Jason worked on Saturday, as usual. But I went down to my veg garden first thing. I was down there quite early, before it got too hot. 
and pulled out a load of um like a blackberry bush that was invading my veg garden it was coming right over the fence and it was sort of on the path and in the way so there we go a baby boy card using non-christmas stamp sets and the um be biggest wishes we're going to say best wish biggest wish and then we've got hello baby boy a little bow and then congratulations so quite cute i don't know if i love it my inspiration obviously came from the previous live where i used the same stamps and elements to create this one but yeah here's my original it's pretty much the same might have placed um, my stamping a little better so it's such fun just think of the possibilities of this whirly die set so absolutely love it right let's put those to one side I'm wondering what to do. Shall I do one more whirly card? I have die cut pieces ready. What are we doing for time? Ooh, because I really want to do the other card with you. Let's try and do this one super, super quick because I have cut some pieces ready. Okay, so. Got our card at base again. Let me just measure that check now i've cut that it looked a bit wider i need to just trim that down to five and a half i'm in such a habit of of making the base five and three quarters ellie the kids played out in the pool oh it's so nice if they've got a bit of water to play in haven't they did a bit of hench trimming Oh, yeah, when the combines come up through the lane. Surprising what damage they can do, isn't it? Thanks, guys. You, you like that card. So this is not a baby one. This is going to be a general one. And this one I'm going to do landscape. So using the same colour combo again, just so that I don't have to keep switching and swapping out stamps. I've inks rather I've already cut my base and my uh, wheel as well and I've got some other pieces ready in my pot so first things first I'm going to do the same again with the misty moonlight and my blending brush and I'm going to create oh that was a bit heavy down there just a bit of a sky all the way over this one nothing too crazy just a bit of background color yeah it's been so lovely to eat outside in the evenings as well we've eaten out every night since this weather has turned it's just so lovely and then again i've got my knight of navy stamping right marker you can see it's quite juicy. Just add some, some splats to the background. Next. What I should do first is cut my window. Otherwise, we can't see what's going to be poking behind. So for this one, I'm going to use this die. And I'm going to have it up in this corner. And I'm going to make sure, well not make sure, but I'm just going to line it so that this edge is kind of parallel with my card. I'll just run that through my machine quickly. Oop, it moved, of course. Pop my bit of scrap paper over the top. And wind it through. I should have done that before. Normally I do that before I do any die cutting, any 
colouring and then I would have had a plain panel there that I could have used for something else. So what we need to do now is the stamping on this one. So as hopefully you can see, I'm using this, this shape here. And I also felt inspired that when you cut these pieces out, when you've done things like this, you could actually stick pieces on, but you have to be careful. It's best to stamp on these uh, panels rather than adding on die cut pieces because they will slow down um, when you're trying to spin. Let me bring my one back in. So let's just say you die cut a star and stuck it on when you try to spin it would get stuck when it's going through so it is best to keep the panels just for stamping on i have seen i did watch another video where somebody actually put a layer of acetate over the top of some die cut pieces to help it go through so i might actually try that that looks quite cute on there doesn't it stands out so i can see where my three i don't need to do pencil marks because i can actually see where those wedges are on here and what i need to remember is because my wedge is over this side my stamping my wedge the the bottom straight edge is going to be parallel okay so that's the reason why I placed that on their parallel so that I knew where to stamp because obviously if I just stamped on it randomly in the middle then when you turned it round your your greeting wouldn't it would be at a crook do you know what I mean oh I'm not very good at explaining things guys I'm not a very good teacher <laughs> so you just have to like watch and learn and play right sentimental rose card kit love 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 the happy birthday let's just pull off the one that i used put the congratulations one back in because i don't think i'm using that no i'm just looking at my original to see what i've used so I'm lining up my wedge so that the bottom is there, par like parallel. I'm going to ink up my happy birthday. This is another lovely greeting and I've done this in Misty Moonlight. Might just have to pull it down so I can actually see. And I want to pop it. I can't see very well with the light. But I'm just going to have to hope. I'll tell you what I do. I have got... Bear with me. I've got this here. I'm going to pop that over the top just so that I can see where my stamping area is. That just helps me. So that is straight. did move a little bit wasn't very crisp but it will be fine and then from the tidings and trimmings it's going to take the little outline star this one is so delicate and just pop a couple on here just to break up the greeting like that Belle I'm a fab teacher <laughs> don't know I am passionate I will I will give that I don't know about patient I am a little patient I'm not very patient with myself am I sticking things down the OCD takes over like things to be straight okay next one this one I thought now I'm gonna go back to the so what I keep saying that I am trying to just use these two stamp sets. So at this point, you could go through your 
greeting sets. You could line these up over and pull any other elements or stamps or greetings to put in the next window. But because I just wanted to use these ones, so I'm just lining that again so that line is straight. I just wanted to use the stamps that I've got to hand. So what I did for this one was I created myself on a scrap bit. I created, I cut, I don't know if you can see, I cut another wedge from copy paper because I want to go over the edge on this one. Now, if you used this one, I cut on basic white and because it's quite thick, you get a bit of an edge when you're stamping. So if I just do, I've got the solid stamp again in Misty Moonlight. Let's just have it straight. And I'm just going to randomly inside this line, put some solid stamps like that. But then with my little outline, I just want to infill and I'm going to go over the edge and you have to press quite firm because you're going over the edge of a piece of paper as well. So I'm just randomly filling like that. Now it probably wouldn't matter if you just went right over the edge because when you turn the wheel you only see what's within the window um, and I've not really had time to figure and play with whether it actually matters. Um, but what your main concern is that you're not going into, you're not encroaching into the next window, if that makes sense. Then the last window, I thought, let's just clean off that happy birthday. So I'm using three greetings from this set very usable one for your stash i don't want thank you all oh, the best wishes no i don't want that i want for you i want the best wishes in a minute it's quite a big block for this but i'll be careful and i think i can judge just flatten you down the ink it in the misty moonlight again straighten up the line of that wedge and just pop down the for you. How lovely is that greeting? I love the curly bit on the R. And then I thought, let's just add a bit of something around the outside. So I pulled back in my um, die cut piece of photocopy paper and then I pulled out the leaf. You can see where I'm going because I've already done this looks a bit crooky but i'm sure it'll be fine and we're just going to stamp over the edge again and just bring in some of the oh it moved it won't hurt bring in some of the leaves into the edge like this and then maybe a star or two. Oh, I feel like I need another one there to balance it, but I think that was a bit of overkill. <laughs> Looks quite cute when you pull it off and they're sectioned. So that's our little greeting wheel. So what we can do now is pop this together Pull out another brad. Make ourselves another dimensional sandwich, as Belle would call it. So just a dimensional top and bottom is enough. Pierce a hole in the middle. I am on my pierce mat, by the way, my spongy mat. And pop that one through first, then that one. This is where you hope everything lines up. 
I'm sure it'll be fine. And then our little sandwich on the back. And then we can open out the wings and fold it down. In fact, I don't want it to flatten in too much. And then pop some dimensionals behind this layer and do exactly the same process as before. I like to put one at the top here of the wheel, but just be careful it doesn't touch the wheel, as I said before, otherwise it will either slow it down or cause it to not move. So we just balance out dimensionals, move you out of the way ink. Pull off the backs and pop it down. onto the piece of Sahara sand, which is not a true measurement. It's not an exact measurement. Um, it's five and a quarter and a bit. It's almost a sixteenth, just so that it gives you an even border around this die cut panel. It's a bit of an awkward measurement, but. Now, I can put this down now. Oh dear, I thought the Tombow was going to be fun and games today, but it was last night when I opened it. Just started oozing out everywhere. Right, let's just stick that panel down. Trying to, oh, zoom in and it wasn't working. <laughs> nope, I'm not going to do it. I don't know why it does that say that every time just wanted to zoom in a bit and it won't oh and then when you actually grab the zoom it's like a million miles in oh i know Belle. i do not like the centimeters don't like them okay let's get a wriggle on right i just need to stamp another one of these lovely stars don't think I've got one done already. Let's have a look. I've got some other pieces done. So I want to cut this one out. I've also got a piece of soft succulent here. And what I want to do, let's put those to one side. I want to cut that one. using that one and then I want to cut like a skinny bordered where's all my washi tape gone I want to cut a skinny border I was just gently bending my very gently bending my die then because it was curving up so if I pop the large star down first and then this beautiful intricate one in the middle. Give them a nice even border around in between both of them. Like that. Pop the top plate on. And run it through quickly hoping that nothing moved. I might come out. <laughs> Didn't want to come out then. And then we've just got this pretty star. And then by cutting both of these together, we get oh it hasn't cut it very well let me just run it back through don't know why that happened probably because my plate is so my top plate is curvy 
way. Just kind of bend them up and down in different directions. And then I just want that one there. But of course I've got this one left for something else for later. So let's put that to one side. Tip those bits away, because we don't want those. And start to assemble. And I've just got one greeting to do. So I'm going to start with the star and I'm literally just going to add in, my Tombow will allow, oop, teeny weeny dot on each sort of centre point there and pop that one. I'm okay that it's hanging over there, I want it to overhang a bit. And just pop that one in there. This one I'm going to add some dimensionals. It's definitely going to be a large letter kind of card in the post. And I'm just going to randomly stick that one up there. Then I'd already cut these two here. So I have one down here and then the soft succulent one. So remember these are Christmas dies. They are Christmas dies that are definitely not just for Christmas. We'll have you hanging over that window a bit. Let's just turn it around. And then finally, I want to hide that I don't want to say ugly because it's silver and it's just a brand centre, but I, I've got no reason to leave it like that. And I kind of want to hide it because it's not a product you can buy at the moment. So I just thought I would use these stars. I've got a scrap bit here. And I'm just going to run that through and cut out these lovely stitched stars there is a star a cute star die in the christmas trimmings oh i can't pick anything up today but it's not quite big enough let me show you it's this one and it's just not quite big enough to hide my huge brad it would work with the the ones that i've got coming the squares and circles I lost one somewhere. Where did I lose it? Along the way somewhere. Put you back. And then this one here, the medium sized one will fit lovely over the middle. So a couple of glue dots. These are a bit hot as well. So of glue dots over there and we'll just pop that star over the top so it kind of blends in with the card as well and then to finish what have I oh I already had some stars cut let's pop a cloud up here this could be overkill but I like the clouds so I want to use them wherever I can they're cute and they're stitched and then I want a greeting now I did consider using this leftover piece from the previous card and then it I just felt it was too bulky so in the give it a whirl die set you've got this lovely banner die so I thought let's take a scrap of card what I'm going to do is die cut, let me show you, it's a bit long, it's a bit longer than what I wanted it to be, so I'm going to cut one to start with, 
do that quickly. Can you see how this top plate is bent? But it's bending in different directions. And then what we do, so it's die cut that lovely piece. I want to make it shorter. So I'm not sure how much shorter I want it to be. So I'm just going to line it in. You can feel it kind of get into the groove of, of the line underneath. Let me just measure, make it a bit longer. Like that. Tape it down and recut it. But when I put it into my machine, I only I don't need to cut the whole of it, so I just kind of partially put on my top plate. So it just chopped off the end and gave me a smaller die cut piece, which is really good because sometimes we don't want things to be too long. And then I'm going to pull out the third stamp I'm going to use today will be the best wishes which is in another lovely script and again with the misty moonlight line it up on my grid first that always helps me I think I've got ink on me just give that another ink oh it looks a bit crook I'm just going to clean that and move it. It looks a bit wonky. That's better. <laughs> Me and wonky, we're just not a good combination. Oh, I've made it just about the right length. Any shorter and it wouldn't have fitted on. Of course, I could have cut, stamped it first and then cut it. So final part, and I hear you all cheering. Hooray, hallelujah. She's almost done. Just gonna add a couple of dimensionals on there. And pop that a bit lower. Like so. And then we've got a general birthday card, which could work for masculine. Oh, I'm looking at my Mac and it's all out of focus. Don't know if that's an internet thing with me. Hopefully you can see clearly. Can't read any comments. So yeah, so we've got for you, happy birthday, and then just some stars. So super cute. I don't know how long it's been fuzzy. If anyone's there still listening in, I can see there's several of you live, but can you just tell me, is it clear? Or is it fuzzy for you? Just to give me an idea. Because if it's fuzzy, then I'm not going to do the final project. Just wait and see if anyone comments and have a quick drink. Thank you, Kim. How's your view, Kim? Does it look fuzzy to you? It's not fuzzy for you, it's, it's me then. Picture's clear for you. Okay, so a good general boy card, man card. Cute, hey? I thought it was cute. Looks good for you as well, Ellie. Brilliant. 
Okay, I've got one more card. I'll show you this card. I'm not going to make it because I want to show you the penguins. Um, because I thought that'd be fun just to share a quick card. But the other card I was going to make is kind of the same but different. So just another baby one using the tidings and trimmings. And we've just got congratulations. Hello. And then the little bow, which I made my little faux pas. Can you see? I didn't, I, I thought I needed to mask it off and it didn't work, but that's okay. So just another take where I've switched Bring these back in. on my first card. Let's just do up these inks. On my first card, I did my little window at the bottom. And then you can see on my second card there, my little window is at the top. So cute and hopefully giving you some ideas on what you can do with the, the Give It A World dies. Okay, so I wanted to share with you, I think this will be pretty quick. I hope it will be. Might need to clean off a couple of stamps just so that I've got some blocks. So I thought I'd use this and this and then another sneak peek a little bit of this so some of you might have already seen this card i'm just putting away a couple of stamps because i just want my teeny tiny blocks and i have more in my basket but it's holding down my camera stand and if I take too many blocks out of it I'm frightened it's going to topple over so this is a sneak peek coming in the new mini catalogue absolutely love it it's going to make some great autumnal masculine cards and of course the penguin place I've got a class coming next month on that where are my cards and show you this is a super sneak show you really quickly these cards coming next month so that will be going up on my web website soon but obviously you won't be able to book until uh 3rd of august when the catalog goes live because obviously there's an option to include the the penguin place stamps and the punch as well that goes with it right let's get a wriggle on some of you will have seen this as i've said but i just thought it would be fun to stamp with it and share some cards so it's really sweet i'm not doing anything christmasy let's just mount up a couple of stamps Oh, let's find another block. Then I need a beak. Oop. How am I doing? Oh, I'm going to have to be super, super quick. I need another small block and some feet. And I think that's all until we come to the greeting. So this stamp set is 16 pounds on its own. Ruth, you're gonna put those dies on your wish list. Yeah, they're great fun. Really, really good fun. Need one of those out of there in a moment. In fact, let's get it now. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun with those dies. Like I said, I kind of challenge myself just to use those two stamp sets and obviously the greeting set from the Sentimental Rose. But if you pull in other stamps, you're going to find it much easier to, you know, fill the little holes in the window on the wedge. Okay, the other thing before I go, get going, 
let's have a quick look at these papers that are coming. How cute are these? Obviously, fussy cutting heaven for those of you that love it. This one, I think, works with the punch. I haven't tried it, but I'm looking at it. And the punch is upside down. I'm sure it does. I can't get into it because of the way the punch is. But I'm sure that cuts out the penguin. So they're very fun. So you could cut all of these out, but the other sides are really gorgeous as well. Got these cute penguins, polar bears and foxes. So really good prints, but when I turn them over, we have got some lovely patterns here, which really only this, uh, this one screams Christmas to me. Okay, so that is a free offering for celebration. So maybe if you buy yourself when it goes live, the penguin party, penguin place, um, stamp set and bundle and then add on something else because I can't think how much the bundle is, maybe 30. Let me check. Then you need to just add on something else for it to reach 45. I can't show you inside the catalogue, sadly. So the bundle is just £29.50. So for the Penguin Place stamps and the punch, £29.50. So if you added on a pack of Whisper White cardstock and an envelope, Whisper White, where did that come from? Basic White. Then um, you would reach your £45 and you could choose the paper for free. Where's my kit? Here's my kit. So you may have seen this. If you're in my team, I'm going to be sharing this with you on Thursday night as well but I know some of you have already seen it. So I've got some pieces cut, starting with a piece of fresh freesia for my base. I've got ink on my nail. Don't know how. And then I've taken a piece of basic white and it measures two and three quarter, couldn't remember the length, by five and a quarter. I'm going to pull in my sponge mat and then using this lovely large splat so these are my colors that I'm using just jade which is a lovely kind of emeraldy green I'm going to pull in the fresh freesia this won't take long to do guys honestly it's a really quick card I'm going to ink up this lovely big splat Oh, where did that come from even? It's because I just moved a stamp. <laughs> Turn it over. Ink up the splat. Stamp it off because I don't want it full strength. And then just stamp it down twice. Just to create myself a background. And then because these papers have the misty moonlight in. I'm going to use my marker just to add a few delicate splats like that. It's a gorgeous stamp, really, really lovely. Let's put that to one side. And let's stamp the little penguin. Now, when you look at the punch, you can see that the penguin is upside down. And the great thing about this as well is that you can create penguins with just the punch if you draw in some eyes. So you've got the center part there of like the white part of the body. So I'm going to stamp my little penguin in memento ink. And my finger definitely went in it then. Who thinks this set is cute? Who's going to be adding it to their list? Well, some of you may already have it if you're a demonstrator. I'm going to stamp him upside down. 
cute. He's already got eyes on, of course. I didn't need to stamp him upside down then. That was that was a bit dim, wasn't it? That's the kind of thing that happens in my world, guys. I just have to make sure when I put him in the punch that he's upside down. Duh. Right, pale papaya, calypso coral. We'll start with his beak. And I've got my calypso coral dauber. Probably got enough ink on there, but I'm going to dab it in and, oh, there is quite a lot on there, take some off. So I'm gonna pop his beak in the pale papaya and then a bit like we do with the peaches and I'm just gonna add a bit of blush to the bottom of it and line that in directly under where that black piece finishes. And then we'll do the same with the feet. Now on the punch, you can punch the feet out, but for speed today, I'm just gonna stamp it. So again, just in the pale papaya, Oh, that was a bit much. See if I can take a bit of that off. And then down at the bottom. Cute, super cute. And then with your punch and your penguin upside down, pop it in, line it up and punch it out. Let me just get a piece of basic black. Oh, I've got a huge piece. And just punch that out to show you. And that one as well. Oh, builder punches are always messy, aren't they? Just so that you can see that when you punch out, and then obviously if you punched out feet in Calypso Coral, or whatever color you like, you can create little penguins. But I highly recommend you get the stamps because you can just do so much more with them. Put you to one side. Next thing I need is a couple of these little parcels or presents. And We'll have one. Oh, I don't want pale papaya. That wasn't my plan. We'll have one in fresh freesia. And another one in just jade. Like that. And then whilst I've got my just jade out, Grab another scrap and then from the same set, so you can see we've got, you look at it and it's Christmassy, you see the antlers, you see the tree, you see the snowflakes, but we've got a happy birthday in here and we've got a thanks. So it turns it into a multi-purpose stamp set and we've got this lovely balloon. just going to stamp straight down in just jade that's very intense and I have been cutting this out and then realized that there is another option so if anybody has I mean look how loved mine is it's very grungy Let's give it a wipe very grungy and scratched but this is the old balloon punch and a little fun fact, it actually punches that one out. Who would have thought? Oh, and sadly, this one is retired, but I know a lot of you have it. So bear that in mind. I know a lot of you have that balloon punch. Right, I'm just gonna snip around these parcels. really quickly and 
and I think we're nearly there. Just let's leave that there actually. Let's just do a greeting. I've got some pieces cut already, and this one I thought I would do lots of thanks, which is that one. With photopolymer, obviously your your stamps kind of move around a little bit and you can bend them and manipulate them, which is good fun. But when you want it straight, um, just make sure it has mounted onto your block straight. Oh, I might do this in on my original. I did it in Memento. Might stand out a little better. I've got dropses now. So I'm just going to ink that in Memento. Stamp it down onto this little skinny strip. Trim off the edge. And then I think we're done with all the stamping. The other thing I need to do, Shall I do this now or do it after? I'll do it after because that's how I did it on my card. Right, I'm scooting all of these inks out of my way for a moment. Because it's dangerous having them all open when there's lots of white card stock about. Okay, we're coming together now, guys. First of all, I'm going to, I've cut two strips of that lovely DSP. Let me tell you what it's actually called. Right in the beginning of the celebration brochure, it's called Penguin Playmates. And it's 12 by 12, you get 12 sheets free with a 45 pounds order. But obviously not until celebration goes live. So I'm just gonna add on some strips. So I did design this card for the Global Design Project. They had the uh, Case the Designer Challenge and it was it was just such a simple sketch that I thought I'd give it a go. And it was a perfect opportunity to pull out a new stamp set. So Tom Bow along there. Try and get the same amount overhanging. Which is always tricky. Snip off the ends. Right, let's just lay that down and see if we've got any end pieces. Of an end hanging over there, and then we're just going to pop that one straight down onto our fresh freesia card base in the bottom right corner. Just for a different look, could have put it in the center, but I've just offset it like that. Now, from the Christmas trimmings dies I've cut myself a large star in basic white and I'm just going to pop that down right in the middle of my splats And I've cut myself a little skinny strip, or this is probably an off cut. And I just want a piece that's overhanging the edge of the star. I can hear somebody outside the gate. Could be the postman. I could just hear the gravel because I've got the windows open. Just gonna pop that down like that. You can hear when a car pulls up because I can hear the gravel moving around. And then my little lots of thanks greeting is just going to sit on top 
of that bar just to ground it like that. Let's pop a couple of dimensionals behind my penguin, not too near the top because it's going to hang, its head's going to hang off the edge of the star. So we'll just pop him down there. Oop. Like that. And then I thought I'd lost a present then. We'll pop dimensionals behind these two. One, oh, that one stuck to me. At least I know where it is. Pop one over here. Oh, I've double layered on that one. I'm on double height. Me and my dimensionals. Pop one over here. And then tuck one behind, like that. And then to finish, we just need to attach the balloon. So I've got some white baker's twine I don't want it to be too long because it's just going to attach from the penguin to the bottom of the balloon if you've got um, double-sided tape or tear and tape that might work well for this but I'm just gonna add a glue dot there and then pop on my baker's twine. Add a dimensional in the middle. And I can see that looks a bit long. So my balloon's gonna go up here. Let's cut off about that much. Right, I'm gonna pick up another, oh, turn that around. Pick up a dimensional and I'm just going to pop it under my penguin there and set it down. It doesn't want to come off it's because I'm doing it backhanded. So I've just wedged, can you see that? There's a dimensional just behind there. And I'm going to attach that piece of twine to it, just sticking it to it so that our balloon is attached to the penguin. Pull off the backing and then pop that where we want it to go. Like that and we're done. That wasn't too, too long, was it? Too long a job, quite quick. The penguin is kind of quick and easy to come together. I love the punch. I think it's super fab and as I've said, you can punch out just penguins draw faces obviously on the punch you've got the feet that you can punch out as well draw a little beak on so there we go a little bit of a sneak peek there let's bring back in the three cards that I made well I didn't make all of them I made a couple and shared one using the lovely give it a whirl die set which you just need to experiment with so don't forget we have our paper sale that's still going so 15 percent off nine of our paper packs so i've been using today the tidings and trimmings that one is in the sale so if you fancy that one for some non-crafty projects um you can let's put that one in there as well you can use that and then you've got some ready for when you begin your Christmas crafting. So, you like the penguin card. You've got all of these and you're inspired to make it. Excellent. Super excellent. As I said, I, I um, entered this one into the, the global design project, the challenge there to case the designer. So, that was where that one kind of came from. But, of course, always inspired by the DSP with colours. So... Thank you, Ruth. That's kind of you. Right, I think I'm going to love you and leave you. I've been way too long today. I keep trying to get this live 
back to an hour, but it it's taking longer. I'm creating too many projects for you, so. But I hope that you've enjoyed um, seeing just how these dies come together and that you do feel inspired that if you've not got them yet, you might add them to your wish list or you could um, feel inspired to create with them if you've got them already. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to head over, grab myself, I suppose that would be brunch now. <laughs> And I will catch up with you all very soon. Please take care in this weather. Um, take care when you're venturing out and make sure that you drink plenty. Keep yourselves hydrated. Really, really important. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Ellie. Enjoying the projects. Lynn, it's lovely to have you and thank you for spending a bit of time with me. It makes such a difference when you've got someone here with you. So I will say bye for now. And... Um, Love to you all and take care. So cheerio.